Across the Park podcast is proud to be sponsored by Globe Gas and Heating. For the best kitchen and bathroom renovations, boiler servicing and repair, and central and underfloor heating in the Northwest, head over to globecentralheating.com and quote Across the Park for a free quote. Hello, welcome back to Across the Park Podcast. It is the second episode of the Opposition Fan Review. Done one last week, Brad and Annie. It wasn't the best. It was with the Villa fan after our, our defeat. So I'm in a little bit of a better mood um, this week. But Brad, thanks for joining us again. How, how are you doing? How are you feeling? Yeah, um, it's good to be back on. Uh, I'm doing all right. Um, you're probably definitely going to have a, an easier show to do today because... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you, you you will definitely be the happier out of the two of us after the, the result at the weekend. Uh, do, do you know what, mate? The, the way the game ended, I, I think we, we were hobbling over the line at, at the end of the game. But but I, I think Everton played well in large part. It, it just comes down to we're, we're, in, we're in this torrid moment where we can't seem to hold on to leads. I don't know whether that's due to the personnel who are playing, because we do have key players out, whether it's due to the, to the management. And I do want to get your thoughts on, on the Everton side of things as well. But yeah. how, do you think the, how do you think the game went from a Leicester City point of view? You alluded to there, you're not too happy with the point. Um, I mean, up until about the 65th minute, tell me which team was struggling to get a point on the board, because... Uh, you, you know, Steve Cooper, to be fair to him, even said it in his post-match conference, and it's the only thing I really 100% agree with him is, is we were deserving to be getting nothing from the game. Hmm. Now, Everton weren't a, a, a class above Leicester by any means. We just kind of went, should we go get the shopping in after this game? Should we... Oh, God, crap, play football. It was like they just forgot they were playing football at times. They, they were slow, they were sluggish, they were lethargic. And and credit to you. I mean, if that Lindstrom actually knew what a goal was like and how to shoot, we would have been battered for in at our time. I, I don't know why Dice insists on, on, on either playing in or telling them to shoot, but he really shouldn't. Because if, if you had, if you had Calvert-Lewin in them positions, I know he's your central striker, but you know what I mean? You, 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 would, have, you would have battered us. You would have battered us, and, and it's concerning for Leicester fans. So obviously, you, you know you, you're an Evertonian. You, you're only going to focus on your own team. But this has been a consistent pattern for Leicester fans already this season. Tottenham, it, it took us till the second half to get going. You know, uh, two 0 down against Villa. Well, the second that second goal went in, it was all it was all Leicester. And like I said, about sixty five minutes, sixty eight minutes sort of mark against you. We sort of turned it up a gear, and all of a sudden it was back to the wall job. And I'm, I'm so annoyed because I'm not going to remind your 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 fan base of the score lines, but with your last two results, mm. you know, <clears throat> and and given given the fact that this is probably going to be a side that it looks like this season it's going to be a team we're fighting against to stay in the Premier yeah. League. Yeah. A point is okay, but in terms of momentum. It benefits you more than it did us. A hell of a lot more. We we needed the three points as a momentum, especially because we've got Arsenal next, and that's going to be about five or six nil. So that's not, that's not something to be great to watch. Um because we can't keep getting away with a late goal saving as a point and hoping the same four clubs draw or lose. So yeah, I was really disappointed in the first sixty odd minutes of that game. Because you look like a team at the top, and we look like a team that was desperate yeah. for a point. I think we, I think we kept the ball in your half well. I think that's what we did. It was, it was sort of like we, you, you couldn't get out, and even though at times you weren't that threatening, yes, there was a really great chance for Lindstrom. It, he should have buried it, and he was dangerous. I think, I think what what hurt what hurt for us, and this is going to sound funny because we've threw two nil leads away in the past few games, is that we didn't get the second in the first half. I, I, I think. 
no disrespect to you, I, I think Villa are a level above Leicester. I, so I, I don't, I don't think you'd have came out the second half with the belief that you could have turned it round. But you had that belief come 60, 65 minutes that even one nil down, and it showed. Uh, for me, I, I look at the substitutions that the manager made. Um, he, he's got a bit of a history of. In some people's eyes, uh, not making the correct substitutions, um, and, and I think again, if, if he gets it right, if we win one nil through a defensive substitution, if you will, he's a genius. Yeah. But he's not getting the, the, he's not getting the lay of the land. Every, every time he seems to make a substitution, I think the away ends weren't too happy when he, he brought Endai off. I thought Endai was a constant threat. I thought in the first half he was brilliant, and in the second half he's still the outlet. Um, but where about did you see the game change? Was it the Everton substitutions? Um, did that did that give Leicester the belief that they could get further up the pitch from where they were? Um, I think it was both both sets of changes really. I mean, we had a a, a young lad who 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 we've who we've brought in called Canoose, who mm. didn't have the greatest of game. He looked a little bit lost, and I I suppose that's probably because we weren't playing the style of football that he's used to. Um, he's used to a more quicker tempo, and when we were being defensive, it didn't work. It didn't really work out. And then we put on Buonete, who we've got on loan from Brighton, and that that kid's going to be something something else. And that's only five games into the season, and he's not our player. He's only a low knees. He's, he's you know, so I'm not I'm not, I'm not saying this just because he's you know like he's our player or anything. He's going to be something else because when he came on. It just seemed to stretch Everton. You know, he was running into gaps. He was closing down. And all of a sudden, something that I was practically screaming at the computer for, for, for 60 odd minutes, was for us to close you down. Hmm. It was happening. We was getting in your face. You were losing yeah. the ball in, in, in your own half. You, you know, we, we, we were taking the ball off. And, and, you know, going back to your substitutions, it's kind of like what we did against Palace when we were two and up. Hmm. You know, we th- we actually did the reverse. You know, we threw the ki- you know the kitchen sink at you, and your response was, "Well, let's go defensive then and try and see it out." Yeah, and we did that against Palace, and unfortunately for us, Conor Cody decided to trip someone up in a box. So, and, you know, and unfortunately for you, it's ended up going in the net. Um, I do feel sorry for your number seven on the line, though, because there's not much else he could do about that. Right, um, right McNeil, he, he, he's yeah. seen his, his face. He, his, he put his face in his hands. and, and he, I think it, the bounce of that ball is just... Uh, you've got to time that defensive jump really well. And in a quick, quick moment like that, it, it's, yeah. it, it was tough. And yeah, you're right. He, he looked absolutely gutted when that goal went in. Yeah, he did. And I just think the conditions, Leicester kind of went, oh, yeah. Let's play the ball on the floor. I mean, we spent sixty odd minutes getting the ball, going long ball with it. Like, like what we were trying to do. We it's like we didn't read the weather conditions, and Everton did. And then, I mean, I was doing the the watch along for it. And I even st- said to myself, the game has completely flipped. We're doing to Everton what they did to us, and now Everton are doing what we were doing in that first <laughs> first half. You know, you were panicking, hitting it long, trying to keep it as away from your goal as best as possible, and we were. We were ripping through you, and and, and that that was the change. It, it was it was Where did ironic. That come from? Where did that weather come from? Because the start of the game, it looked like a, a lovely September. You know, you get that nice sort of autumn weather, and then it just went crazy. Where did, where did it come from? Did, did you have weather warnings in Leicester? Or? No, no. Well, it must have come from about ten miles down the road because I, I live in I live in a, a small village in Leicestershire, and and it was pitch black. Uh, raining and I could look at the King Power at three o'clock. I'm like, am I in the same county here? Because that looks lovely. I want to go over there. And then, oh, Bennett, that lightning break. It was it, it was crazy. Um, and yeah, I I'm, I know it sounds like a silly excuse, but you can really have that in your pocket to say. I think that completely threw you off yeah. because I think Sean Dyche would have given his team the team talk. Give them the momentum to go out there and say, look, let's go out there, let's try and get a second, and then and then if not, then we'll do this. And then all of a sudden gets told you players can't go out because there's mm. a thunderstorm going on. I think that kind of maybe I, I I mean, I don't know, mate, you don't know how Cooper and and, and Dice handled that, but it seemed to have just a little bit of effect on it. 
it, it like was maybe yeah, that, 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 that the level of that rain and the thunder and lightning. You you, you see you know the crowd were cheering and stuff. It, it must be tough to play into. It probably affected both. We, we got in like I said at half time, and I, I feared. I, I did. I did fear that we wouldn't be able to hold on. I, I don't know what it is this season. Um, we, we can't hold on to Leeds. We just can't. And, and I, I don't mean this in a disrespectful way, but you said at the start there that we're sort of your rivals this season. You've got to beat your rivals. You've got to beat your rivals. Exactly. There's, there's no point, and, and you you must feel the same. So, I think in, in the bigger picture, I'd like to do the the, the reverse fixture with it again at Goodison. We can look back, and maybe it's been a better point for both of us than we feel right now. I, I think in the bigger picture, and it's not until the, the later end of the season that you realise how good these one points are. Um, oh, let's, yeah, hope exactly. let's hope it doesn't come back to hate us. But I just want to get your your point of view on 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 Everton. What what did you make of 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 Everton? For probably the first time you've seen us in a, in a long while at, at, at ninety minutes. I imagine. Do you do you feel that there's a side there that that will struggle? Do you feel that the you know they have the right manager in, for instance? What what, what did you make of Everton? Uh, honestly, and until that sixty, like I said, until that that sort of last 20, 25 minutes of the game, you did not look like a team that's going to struggle this season. Mm. You know, despite previous results and despite all the, you know, the, the social media, you know, rib taking you've had, I did not see a side that looks like they're down, cast and beat. And, and, and I remember um, the 2015, 16 season where Villa, we we were two 0 down to them at Villa Park and and won the game three two. They looked like a side that were lost. You know that their next four or five games were horrible. Well, they were funny for me to watch being a Leicester fan. Not that they're you know they're West Midlands. It's not such a rival or anything, but it was still funny to watch. Um, and they made the worst choice ever because they they sat their manager and then they hired in Reme Gard. If you guys do something like that, then you'll start to struggle. Okay. You know, if you stick with Sean Dyes, he he will he will get you out of it because you look you looked like a team that knew what they were doing. You just need that first W. You just mm-hmm. need that first win because you'll keep that feeling of oh my god, I know we're winning, but but and that, you saw that you did see that in your performance and you saw it from your manager. I mean, he went from clapping to doing all this with his arms. I couldn't tell if he was signalling for a boss or, or he was speaking to a deaf person in the stands. He was using his arms that much in them last, them last 15 minutes. But if you can settle yourselves down and get that first win sooner rather than later, you won't struggle. If you're getting to game week 10 or that and you haven't got that first win, that may be the change. But right now, from what I saw from Everton, you're going to be all right. It's just been a freak start to your season. Um, you, you know, get that first W win, and I think you'll put it in the rearview mirror, and you should be fine. And does, on the flip side, does Saturday's results or performance tell you anything different about your own team? What, 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 what are you hoping for this season? I know survival's the easy answer, but is, is, is there a bit more you're hoping for? Are you hoping that Leicester can do a bit more, or are you just wanting survival? Uh, I mean... I want more, but I will take survival right now. I, I said it on, on the, you know, on the preview, and, I, and I, my, my opinion doesn't change regardless of the result. I take seventeenth in goal difference right, right now. Um, I just really wish that Steve uh, Cooper's backroom staff would sit him down and say, "Yeah, hey, Steve, here's a video we've made for you. This is what you need to do to keep Leicester in the Premiership." And it shows him the second half against Tottenham, the 60-odd minute mark against you guys, and about the same against Villa. Because when we attack teams, and I use them three, three, um, three, three examples there, because what you must have felt for that 15, 20 minutes against us when it was backs against the wall and it was all Leicester, that's what we did to Villa when they went, you know, you know in, in that game. That's what we did to Tottenham. I know we we lost the Villa two one and, and we only drew with Tottenham, but neither or no, not a single one of you has had an answer to Leicester playing that style of football. And I, I I think he just needs to learn that yes, don't go to the Emirates and be attacking, but when you play an Everton or you play a Brentford or you play a you know a Brighton, go up them, 
because they might not have an answer for you. If you can actually come in at half time one nil up instead of one nil down, you might start getting points on the board a lot quicker. But yeah, I think we've got the potential to finish higher. But give me seventeenth by by goal difference or goal scored or whatever, and I, I, I'll snap my hand off right now. What, what I will say before before I let you go is um, is I think it's an interesting season down there. I, I think there's a number. I think last season I, I'm an Evertonian. Everton were really lucky that there, that there were three teams who didn't have much about them last season. They were, they were always going to go down. Luton, God love them, give it a fight. But there were yeah. three, three evidently worse teams last season than Everton. It was always going to come down to an Everton and a Nottingham Forest trying to just pull away at the end. I think this season, I don't really see it. I think Southampton probably will go. and, and, and I, I can see Southampton being one of those teams who change a manager in January and just try and you know, Sam Allardyce the way out of it, but I don't think they'll stay up. And then I can't really pick the the easy two is to say Ips- Ipswich and, and and Leicester, but I, I don't really see it. I, I think Ipswich look like a decent side. I think from what I've seen from you guys on Saturday, you seem like you can, especially at home, get points, especially from teams around you. Do you agree that it looks like it's going to be a fight between a, a number of teams? I put Wolves in there as well. Yeah, yeah. I was just about to say you throw Wolves into the mix. Um... I do, I do agree with you. I think Southampton are going to just be... They're not gone by any stretch of the imagination, but I think they're going to have... They're going to have like a Burnley last year season. They're not going to yeah. disgrace themselves, but they're not going to be around. And then, like you said, Ipswich are putting up that fight. How long that lasts, we'll, we'll, we'll see. I'm, sh- I'm sure we'll both get to the halfway point of the season and be looking at Ipswich like, please stop, please stop. <laughs> You know, yeah. please stop picking up points here and there. But hopefully, hopefully we're not relying on that. But yeah, I think there's a there's going to be a interesting season. Um, Find it out for the last two relegation zones. You know, right now looking at the way teams are playing, and just you know, Southampton, you know, conceding a 95th minute equaliser against Ipswich. Uh, that that that's that's just kicking the teeth for them. Um, so. Yeah, I think there's four teams fighting for two spots realistically right now, and yeah. it's going to be interesting. Hopefully, and I'm not just saying this because I want to have some podcast. He says with a smile on his face. <laughs> Hopefully, that's not two positions that either of us fill. Yeah. Um, because what I would say from what I have seen from Everton, and even the games where you would, you know, in that dreaded scoreline and, and, and threw it away. I don't want. I don't want to. I don't want to remind your viewers of the scorelines. <laughs> but you actually did play really well. Yeah. You know, and from what I've seen of us and that, and what I've seen of Southampton and Ipswich uh, and Wolves, I do feel like we've got the edge. Wolves just look atrocious at times. I mean, 2-2 against Chelsea and then just decided not to turn up, got battered 6-2. I think we've got the edge to stay up, but I think it's going to be a hell of a fight and it could even go down to the last game of the season. I hope not, mate. I've been there too much the past few seasons where it's gone to the last week and the last day, and it's. Um, I'm, I know you you were fighting us up at, at one point as well, and it was. It's not nice, is it? You just want to be out there. So l- let's let's hope you know um, that we're both in a, in around March, April time. We're, we're pulled away from it, and we can just you know sleep because trust me, when Everton pulls away from it in April last season, and we were, I could enjoy the last week of the season. It was a new experience to me, and it was. Um, especially in recent times. It was very nice. So let's let's hope so. Um, thank you so much for coming on. We've put the, the Leicester City hashtag in the description and the uh, link to your channel. So you may have a couple of Leicester fans who are in a bit of a YouTube hole and just maybe finding out about Leicester till I die. Do you want to, do you want to give a little plug as to, to what you what you guys do, what you guys got coming up? Uh, yeah, so it's Leicester to ITV, as, as Ian said there, and, and we do post-matches, um, we do uh, watch-alongs, we do previews with of, of opposition fans, so, you know, good as, when it rolls around at Goodison Park, there'll, there'll be two or three shows where we're discussing the game like yourselves, and yeah, just 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 go and check us out, there's, there's loads of things on there, got a great team that work there. Um, Chris is the man that, that, that runs it all. He, he is uh, old but funny, as I like to say, and I'm not on about how he smells either or looks. Uh, he's a funny guy. Uh, he's a great chap. So, so yeah, just just if you even if you just go and check us out and show each show support to a to another footballing you know YouTube ch- channel, I'd be much appreciated. 
and thanks again for having us on. It's been great being on. No, I'm here. It's, it's, it's been great to have you on. I spoke to Chris a couple of seasons ago, and I can vouch for Chris is a good guy, and you, you do do good content. So even any Evertonians who want to go and watch, you know, this week's shows where you're talking about the match, it's a, it's a really, really good channel. I hope to get you back on. You or Chris for the the Goodison game at the end of the at the end yeah. of the year. Are you up for that? Yeah, one hundred percent up for that. Yeah, we'll be definitely on for that. It'd be. Uh... I take you know what, depending on where we are in the season, we'll probably both be happy talking about a point next time round. So the, yeah. the, <laughs> definitely a lot happier than I am anyway. So yeah, I'm all, definitely up for that. Let's hope it's all football, no finances, eh? When those accounts roll rounds, it's oh uh, yeah, it's 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 exactly. Like, That's uh, how we look. Know, Forest fan. <laughs> it's like, I know, it's right? Lot, I hope, some, I hope we've not got a calculator. Reason. I mean, for some reason, it's a lot more nerve-wracking than being a Man United or a Chelsea fan. But that's a whole new podcast and a whole new... Oh, I'll have to keep it out for that, mate. <laughs> yeah. Okay, mate. Well, thanks very much. Any Evertonians that you are or are watching, I'm back in the studio tomorrow. I'm going to be talking about the game a bit more in depth from, from more of an Evertonian point of view. Is Palace on Saturday a must-win? For me, it is. It absolutely is. And I'm going to be talking with a very special guest. We've got Paddy Boyland from The Athletic. He's going to be in the studio. We'll have a cup of coffee and we're going to talk all about the Blues, Sean Dyche, in depth. But this has been the Away Fan Review. Brad, once again, thank you for joining us, mate. And I've got to end it with a up the toffees.